Hey, I'm Stefan with Papadakis Racing. We're here with my 72 Celica, and just like the rest of my projects, it snowballed. Initially, I just wanted to do some rust repairs, some spot stuff, but while we're at it, we figured, ah, we might as well just paint the whole car. So I wanna share with you guys our process of doing that, and uh, let's get started. I'd like to introduce Dominic. So he's a jack of all trades and somehow a master at all of them. He helps a lot with the projects around the shop. So the first step was to disassemble the Celica. None of us have been this deep into a Celica before. So understanding how to take all this stuff off was relatively straightforward, but we really wanted to take our time and make sure we didn't break anything. We also labeled all of the parts, bagged a lot of the screws, and the extra time to label everything now is actually totally saved at the end when you go to put the car back together and you're not searching around for hardware. The original color of the Celica seems to be this off-white color, which I think they had these weird like baby poop colors in the 70s. Uh, not really uh, in my style. So, you know, we, we thought for a moment of maybe repainting in that color, but I really like the blue. Uh, so that's the direction we ended up going with the paint. We kept all the parts on these racks with the casters with the wheels in the bottom. That way we can kind of just, you know, keep the stuff out of the way in the shop. We try to put as much stuff in the shop on wheels. That way we can arrange the shop depending on what we're working on. There were several parts of the car that needed some rust repairs, some metal work. So we wanted to do that at our shop before taking it to the body shop. So for instance, you can see in this location at the bottom of the windshield where it was probably puddling some water and over time it just started rusting. The first thing we need to do is to get down to the bare metal and get all of the old paint and everything off. There's several ways of doing that, but the quickest way that we had locally was to just do some sandblasting. You have to be real careful though because you don't want to blast any of the flat panels because you can start having them warp. And you also have to be real careful to not over sand it because the sandblast can actually take some of the metal off as well. An already thin body like a Toyota Celica, you have to be real careful. The blasting is also good because you can get into all the little crevices and places where you can't get normal sanding tools. And that way you can really start fresh. You can see here where the roof and the A-pillar are brazed together by some factory worker 50 years ago, probably by hand. We also sandblasted the trunk area and then any areas that we knew we had to do metal work. So for instance, this fender, uh, once we blasted all of the old Bondo and stuff away, you can see where the car actually had some previous metal work and it was rusted all the way through. So the first step in the metal repair is to cut the metal back past anywhere that there was any kind of rust or any kind of damage. And then in this example on the fender, Dom handmade a fill piece out of mild steel. And in order to have the least amount of body filler later, we wanna to try to match the original shape as possible. So Dom's using a magnet to hold the material in place and just using a standard MIG welder. We have to be real careful not to burn any holes with the welder and because the old part, the metal is really thin. So one of the tricks is you weld a spot, you let it cool down, then you do another spot, you let it cool down and you just take your time and go around the entire part and eventually you've got it all welded and you haven't burned any holes if you did it right. And really at this point, what we wanna do is build up material. And then we go and sand it down and we get it as close as we can to the factory shape. Here's a few more parts where we did some rust repairs on the lower rocker. And then the old over fenders uh, had a bunch of holes where they were mounted and we filled those to have fresh ones later when we put the new fenders on. And while we're at it with the car this far apart, I figured we might as well also do some strengthening. So we did some spot welding uh, around where the frame rails attached to the unibody. Normally on these layers, it's just like a, a uh, factory style spot weld. But when you get the MIG and you do these extra welds, you can help uh, make the chassis a bit more rigid. The chassis dolly we made is just two inch square tubing uh, with casters on the bottom. It also has some adjustable frame rail brackets and they're just clamped on with this bolt on the bottom. Our buddy Damien from Auto Explosion in Gardena, California painted the car. He and his dad have been painting show winning cars for decades. We looked at a lot of colors, Ferrari colors, Porsche colors, some Mercedes ones, but eventually just landed on a Toyota Blue uh, from the 1980s. Now comes some of the real elbow grease. So Damien spent two or three days just removing the old paint primer and sanding it down with his 3M Rolock tool. After getting all the way down to bare metal, 
within like an hour, you've got to get the direct to metal primer on. The reason why is you don't want any moisture to get into the metal and that can cause issues, you know, later on in the, in the car's life. After about 24 hours of drying, then you can start repairing the dents, imperfections uh, with a hammer. You try to pound all that stuff back out and get it as smooth as you can before you start doing any body work. He'll then start blocking the whole body from starting from 80 grit sandpaper all the way up to 600. As the imperfections are shown, you do another layer of like a high build primer and then you sand it again. Eventually you just end up with a super straight body. At some point though, we did have to start using some filler because some of the factory body lines were not perfect anymore and you need the filler to build up and then sand it back to get that body line perfect in the car. In the paint booth, it starts off with a primer sealer coat and that's different than the direct to metal stuff. And immediately right after that, you do the base coat, which is the color. You do that quickly because it helps the base coat to bond. The base coat is the color coat and we use the PPG water-based paint. After fully drying with heaters and the forced air, about 30 to 60 minutes, Damien did two coats of clear. And after about another 24 hours, it's buffed, inspected, and then polished. And then the plan was to wait six months for everything to totally cure and the clear coat actually gets a lot harder. And then we come back and do a color sand and full buff. And then you get that really smooth, slick look and you can get rid of pretty much all the orange peel. Once back at the shop, we touched up all the undercoating of the car with truck bed liner. It dries a lot harder than most undercoatings and worked really well for this application. Three dudes fighting the sunset right now. <laughs> Once back in the shop, it was time to reassemble. Many of the silica parts uh, needed to be restored, like the headlight bucket and like those areas were so rusted out. So we had them blasted and then the silver is actually Cerakoted and the whole back piece is powder coated. And some of the pieces we actually used uh, SEM trim black paint, which is an amazing paint that's a really OE looking black paint. The headlights are a Holly product. It's actually an LED headlight, but it has the retro look to it still. I think they call it retro bright. I'll leave a link to those in the description down below. The modern LEDs are so much better than the old halogens and everything, uh, but these are neat because they still have the old school headlight look. The rest of the light lenses, including the tail lights, were all buffed by Damien, and then he clear coated them, which made them look like brand new perfect. It's pretty amazing. Pretty much all the hardware was either new or we sent a lot of stuff out to get re-zinc plated and it has that factory gold look. After aligning the new over fenders, uh, they're drilled and then held in place with these aircraft Clico, like temporary fasteners. And then the final installation was done with nut certs, which are basically like rivets, but they have threads inside of them. And we use stainless steel screws that are black and black nylon washers. The little weather strip in between the over fender and the paint is actually a Toyota product from a Toyota Tundra that has factory over fenders. Over the next few weeks, you know, a couple months, as we had time in between the drift events and everything, uh, we'd spend time on the weekend or whenever and get the car back together and tuned up the rest of the parts, cleaned them all up and, and started reassembling the car. So here's the car after six months now, color sanded, buffed. What's cool about the light in the shop when, you know, I filmed it this day is you can see the difference, like the the color shift a little bit, depending on whether it's in the, the sun or where it's a little bit darker, it looks different. I've driven the car a bit and actually got some rock chips and stuff on it already, uh, but that's okay, I wanna use it. And you know, the Celica is not done. I still have a, like you can see my clipboard there. I have a whole list of stuff still to do to this car. And that's what's cool about the hot rods, you know, is you just, you never really finish it. You know, it's like an ongoing project. The purple Wiggins clamp on the top of the valve cover and hose are for the crankcase breather tank from Radium. Inside the trunk is all painted with Steel It black spray paint and the fuel tank is black powder coated. All the stainless steel window trim is actually OEM. Uh, we just cleaned it up and polished it. Overall, super happy how this thing turned out and thanks everybody for helping to you know restore this old Celica.